All right, everybody. As I promised, uh, we already went over this packet um, in class and everything, but I said I would make a video for you guys and go over uh, more of the examples that are in here. Um, I will try to speed up the video a little bit when I'm going through the examples, so you're not just watching me right on the page and stuff, but uh, just so you guys can go through the examples and we'll reiterate all of the rules we have for exponents. Very quickly, this is your homework assignment. Um, we'll probably shoot for this. We have the quiz on Tuesday. Um, you'll have some time to work on uh, Tuesday after the quiz is done, so we'll probably, I'll probably be looking for this assignment from you guys on Wednesday or Thursday, depending upon which block, um, which block you're in. All right, we already did these first four examples, so we're going to skip the first page. Let's go to the next page. All right. We did these examples here in class. We spent some time going through what a monomial is. It's an expression with one term. Uh, the important things you want to keep in mind here is that these are always made up, made up of multiplication or division, so multiplication or division, and that there is no addition or subtraction when you are doing these. So for example, 3x squared, 8xy to the fifth z, these are all monomials. 1 fourth x squared y is also a monomial, but x plus y is not a monomial. All right, okay. Uh, polynomial is just multiple monomials strung together using addition or subtraction. Okay. Next page. We went through these examples in class, so I won't spend a lot of time on these. We do, if you guys have the packet, you can go through here and there is um, there is the rules page that has all of the actual um, rules on it. So whenever we're doing a product of powers, we have, uh, it's important to remember the base needs to be the same. So if I've got something like um, a squared and a cubed, they're both bait, what we call base a. If these letters are the same, then this rule applies. If these letters are different, then these rules don't work. All right. Um, let's see here. Going through this just a little bit quick so we can move on. We've covered it all, a lot of it already. We go to the next page. We did these examples in class. I'll do these really quick here for you. Always multiply the, um, the uh, coefficients together. So 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. We'll do the a's next. a squared times a is a cubed and then b squared times b cubed is b to the fifth. Okay. The only time we'll use this prior rule, the rule for multiplication, the quotient of powers rule, I'm sorry, not the quotient of powers rule, the power to a power rule, you need to have parentheses with, uh, that's followed immediately by an exponent. So you're going to see parentheses raised to an exponent. Okay, it's the only time we use this rule. So you'll be looking for some very specific structure when we use this one. So, for example, on this example we were doing, we have parentheses on all of the on all three parts of the. This is one giant monomial. We have parentheses, but none of these have an exponent outside of the parentheses. Okay, so we don't use the multiplication rule here. Unlike number two, where we do have an exponent outside of the rule. Okay. There is a rule that is not covered in the book. I did mention this, I think I mentioned this to the F block class. I'll mention it to both classes again, though. Um, and that is if you have multiple things multiplied together, raised to power, you apply this exponent to everything on the inside. So it goes to all three pieces of the monomial. So this would then become A to the N, B to the N, and c to the n. This rule actually does have a name. I, I, I'll have to look it up and, and uh, tell you guys about it. I forget what the actual name for this rule is, but we'll all look that up and tell you guys about it in class. So let's go back to this one here. By this rule, we're going to apply this to, we're going to square everything on the inside. So if I do a little intermediate step here, that would be 3 squared, and then we'll have x squared squared, and y cubed squared. And then we'll apply the power of power rule. 3 squared is equal to 9 x squared squared, we multiply these together, so that'll give us x to the fourth, and again, we multiply these together, so that gives us y to the sixth, okay? Likewise here, apply this rule, send the two through. I'll go ahead and just apply this here. This becomes 16m squared times 2mn, okay? 16 times two, that's going to be, if I can do my math in my head, that's 32. m squared times m is m cubed, and we don't have another n, so we just have a lone n at the end. So that takes care of that one. Let's go to the next page. So we did these examples in, in, in class. If you ever get stuck on these, you can always expand them. So like, for example, here the x to the fifth one is the same thing as x times x times x times x times x, times x all over x squared. 
and then cancel out things that are the same. So I'm going to cancel this x with this x, this x with this x, leave me with just this, giving me x cubed. You can apply that same rule to all three of these examples. Okay, We did these largely in class. I did them in class with both, uh, both classes, so I won't waste time with these. Let's go to the next page. This is our actual uh, our actual exponent rules page. I gave you guys a bunch of extra ones in class. Um, let's see what else did we have here. I just gave you the a, b, c to the nth power is a to the n, b to the n, c to the n. I'm trying to think what else I gave you. I gave you the negative exponent rule. So if I have a to the negative exponent, this is equal to 1 over a to the positive exponent. And then I gave you the two constant rules. So you have a to the 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is automatically equal to 1. And anything raised to the first power is automatically equal to the something that is raised to that power. Okay. Cool. So that gives you, what, six rules there that you guys will need to rule. There actually is a couple more rules when we get to square roots and stuff that we'll add to this list. But for now, these six are the ones you guys will, you'll, you'll be working with. Okay, next page. All right, so we have a bunch of um, examples here on the next few pages. I'm going to run through these. Um, I am going to go through them a little bit quick. You will see the video. I'm going to try to speed up from this point forward so it, so you don't end up with like a 20-minute video of me just solving problems in front of you. Um, I'll try to go through this the following part here fairly quickly. If it's going too fast, you guys can use the features on YouTube to pause the video, or you can even use the, um, if you use the little cog that's down in the lower corner, which would be if I... So if I'm pointing my pen out at that point, it should be right about here-ish, down here, down here. There should be a little cog-looking thing. Looks kind of like this, a little circle with a bunch of stuff going around it. Looks like a little cog. If you guys press that, it's the settings button. One of the one options that will be in there will be the speed control, and you guys can slow down the video. But I am going to go through this uh, kind of quick when you guys will actually watch the video. All right, here we go. There we go. All right, let's go on to the next page now, and we'll see what we have here. So we have our negative exponent rules here. Um, they kind of dropped one on you here on this previous page where we had x squared over 7 on this one here. And we come back to that one over here. This is equal to x to the negative fifth. Okay, applying our negative exponent rule gives us 1 over x to the fifth. This one here, remember, there's always, if you have a lone variable by our... By this rule right here, if you have a lone variable, there's automatically a 1 always above it. So this is really y to the first. So this will give us y to the 1 minus 4, which is equal to y to the negative third, which is equal to 1 over y cubed. Okay. All right. Next page. What happens when the, ne uh, the negative is in the denominator? Okay. So in order to understand this, we have this rule that a to the negative n is equal to 1 over 1 over a to the n. Okay, This holds true in this case right here because this is going to be the same thing as x squared all over 1 over x to the seventh. This is a complex fraction. The way we deal with this is we take the bottom fraction and we flip it over. Okay, we flip it over and we multiply by whatever's in the numerator. So this is the same thing as x squared over 1 times this flipped over, which is x to the 7th over 1, which is x to the 9th. Okay, the other way you can do this is you can use the quotient rule, and this is also the same thing as x to the 2 minus negative 7, which is also, which is also equal to x to the 9th. Okay, cool. All right, let's go to the next one here. Again, we can do this two ways. So you can do this as y1 minus negative 2, which will give you y to the third. Or alternatively, you can do this as y to the first over 1 over y squared, which will give you y to the first 
times y squared, which is also y to the third. So you have a couple of different ways of doing these ones. Okay. All right, the very last one here. This one, we don't have a variable in the top like we did on these previous two, where we had a variable in the top. This one here, we just have a constant. So we're just going to apply the rule directly. So, or we'll, we'll apply um, this version, this version of the rule we did in these two steps. So this will be 1 over 1 over x to the seventh, which becomes 1 times x to the seventh over 1, which is just x to the seventh. Okay. Great. Next page. Almost done here. All right, zero expo exponents here. That's just equal to one. We already have this rule. So if we go to, so let's see here. These are our additional exponent rules. We have the negative exponent, the zero exponent, and the one that's not on here is x to the first is equal to x. Okay. This is the alternative form. So if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, it's just equal to that fraction, or it's equal to this power moved to the numerator, and we make the exponent positive. Okay. So that's a good rule to run. No, these two are actually the same rule. Okay, let's see here, we have a last page. We have some last problems here. These will be our last examples that we do here, so we'll, uh, we'll string everything together here. Let's apply this exponent first, so this will be the same thing as x to the sixth, y squared, z squared, times x, y to the negative four z. Add everything together x to the 6, this will be x to the 7th, y squared times this, that's y to the negative 2, and then z cubed, we always get rid of negative exponents, so this will be x to the 7th, z cubed, all over y squared. Okay, so that is that one. Okay, this one here, I'm going to simplify everything on the inside first before I apply this. Okay, so we'll do the order of operations here. Okay, and we're going to do the parentheses before we do the exponents. Okay, six goes into three twice, so it's going to give us a two. P over P squared is P to the negative one. There's no Q, so I just leave the Q as is. R cubed over R zero. This is just one. Okay, that's a trick. So, or you can also think of it as three minus zero. So this just stays R cubed. Okay, and that's all raised to the negative second power. Simplify it out. We can apply the negative 2 to everything. So we will end up with 2 to the negative second, which we'll deal with in a minute. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. We will have q squared and r to the sixth. Okay, let's deal with the 2 to the negative 2. The exponent rules still apply here. So this is the same thing as 1 over 2 squared, p squared, q squared, r to the sixth, which is one-fourth times p squared q squared r to the six. And just know that this is all over one because it's in the numerator of the fraction. Okay. All right. And this one here, this is one of my favorite trick problems. You will see this on, um, on quizzes and tests. Anything raised to the zero power, regardless of what it is, is always equal to one. There you guys go. That takes care of all of that. We will work on, I think what the next thing we work on is um, multiplying uh, is multiplying binomials and stuff together, which gets back into FOIL. If it's not that, then it's square roots. I'll take a look in the book and figure out the next, uh, the next thing we're working on. So if you have any questions, bring them to class. Remember that we do have a quiz on Tuesday, and it will go over everything dealing with systems. Okay. So your quiz will cover everything on systems, so you'll have to be able to graph them. I will allow you guys to use a graphing calculator on the quiz. We also have substitution and elimination. Okay, There will also be inequalities on there, the graphing of inequalities that we did. Okay. Alrighty, I'll see you guys on Tuesday.